Good morning and welcome to Newcastle Baptist Church. You'll be very pleased to know I've now finished decorating the cover of my Bible. Or maybe you're not, maybe you don't care, but it has been a big deal in my life because it took longer than I thought it would, so it has held me up from moving on to this video until it was done, which probably drove Tom up the wall because he was waiting to edit it, but it's late and it is what it is and that's because of me, not because of him. Because I didn't realise until I was doing it that you can't paint the front and back cover at the same time. You have to do one and then let it dry and then do the other side. I did the decoupage with it laying flat though. I had thought the paint wouldn't get into the creases if I painted it that way. But since the decoupage wrapped around the Bible, I didn't have any choice. Anyway, I'm sure you're very keen to see it now, so here it goes. Splattered the edges with paint from the first go round. I think that looks pretty, especially now it's ended up being a different shade of blue. This is the back, and this is the front. The gold writing says, consider the sparrows and the flowers of the field, dot, dot, dot. And then I put PVA glue on the top. And it is so pretty. I almost wish I had a before photo to compare it with, but uninspiring dark brown to the fresh and bright daisies it has now. Unfortunately, I do not. However, I still have the brown on the edges on the inside of the cover to remind me. So I use leather paint, white first and then blue, two coats each, brand is Scotch Doct Scratch Doctor. Daisies I printed from a website called getdrawings.com. I've got the exact attribution details if you want them. And the sparrow is from a nature website, johnmaylaws.com. So, that is the Bible cover done. Finished a few days before my video would have gone live. Could have maybe, maybe just squeaked through on time if all my metaphoric traffic lights had been green and or Tom had taken Herculean measures to get it finished. And I know that he would, or at least he would try. So in a way, I'm glad it's still late again, so I don't have to ask that of him. It's late because of me and not because of him. End of story. At this point, let's read Psalm 6 before we carry on. Lord, do not re rebuke me in your anger or discipline me in your wrath. Have mercy on me, Lord, for I am faint. Heal me, Lord, for my bones are in agony. My soul is in deep anguish. How long, Lord, how long? Turn, Lord, and deliver me. Save me because of your unfailing love. Among the dead, no one proclaims your name. Who praises you from the grave? I am worn out from my groaning. All night long I flood my bed with weeping and drench my couch with tears. My eyes grow weak with sorrow. They fail because of all my foes. Away from me, all you who do evil, for the Lord has heard my weeping. The Lord has heard my cry for mercy. The Lord accepts my prayer. All my enemies will be overwhelmed with shame and anguish. They will turn back and suddenly be put to shame. A lot of those statements were true for me, without exaggeration or hyperbole. Statements like, my eyes are weak from so much crying, or my soul is in deep anguish, were perfectly true for me, exactly as they were stated. Because of lockdown, of being cut off from people, of being cut off from hugs, of being cooped up, etc. I was at crying in Marks and Spencer level of distress. Feeling sorry for myself, and because I already had COVID-19, seeing still being subject to all these additional restrictions as a futile waste of time at best, and probably more like a deliberate punishment at worst. Crying into my pillow, isn't anyone taking any notice of my suffering, blah blah blah. And you should be glad I didn't make the video with only a couple of days to spare, because you'd have gotten a video full of that kind of lament, full throttle. I would have cried in the video. I wouldn't have been able to help it. And it's not that those problems aren't important, because they are. But I also got a reality check. Because to the person who is very afraid for their own health, who would die if they got it, to the person whose person did die, and they're wading through grief, to the person who has lost their income and they don't know where their next meal is coming from. 
to the person dealing with other problems that have nothing to do with COVID-19 because those haven't gone away or some other problem I've missed that is all of that is going to sound pretty hollow crying because I'm buying new clothes without being able to try them on and the sales assistant was patronising to me which admittedly was more of a final straw situation but still to everyone else in deep or deeper distress crying about that in a video would make them want to slap me and rightly so actually I would want to slap me if I was in their shoes because yes being cut off from everyone is tough and being very afraid for your own health is also tough both together is even worse losing a person is very tough losing a business is tough any of the problems that people deal with any other year are tough mind not saying your specific problem especially if it is covid19 related when i've listed every other one is invalidating i apologize and being invalidated is tough it's all tough and everybody else also finding it tough at the same time does not make it easier like we're all in this together kind of feeling at least i haven't found that it does instead it makes things harder because nobody has any sympathy because nobody has any extra capacity to help and help with anybody else's problems especially when somebody else's problems are so similar to so directly connected to my own problems there's no escape from them no voyeuristic visitation into a friend's problems every so often to lend our strength in a different way where a change is as good as the rest and then we leave secretly glad that we don't have those problems in our life or was that just me and maybe i shouldn't have said that aloud but anyway it's tough all around that's where we got to the good news is there is still a god in heaven he still hears our prayers like verse 4 says he still saves us because of his unfailing love or verse 9 he still hears our cries for mercy. He still accepts our prayers. He loves each of his children individually. Whether we all have the same problems or different ones, he cares about what's affecting us specifically. His lap is big enough for all of his children. He has enough ears to listen attentively to all of us. Enough eyes to see the solutions to everything. He has enough love, much more, abundantly more than enough. He has an excess, a glut of love, more than sufficient to quiet all of our hearts individually. More than sufficient to calm all of our fears and all of our tears. To engulf us completely, to make us feel safe, to give our weary hearts rest. And if it wasn't obvious, your assignment is to find that lap, to confide all your secrets, especially the ones that are making you cry, and to let his love engulf you until your heart is quiet again. Amen.